OT vulnerability management without an asset management system is security theater. I'm Ralph Langner, and in this video I'll show you how you can achieve efficient and measurable cyber risk reduction with the OT-based asset management platform. Let's recap why OT vulnerability management is hard. First, the number of vulnerabilities in OT is much higher than in IT. In OT, devices with well over a thousand vulnerabilities are not rare. Second, patch rates are much lower than in IT, usually because of the cost of patching. And third, lack of visibility. If you don't know how many devices with a certain operating system version, or which firmware versions, or which exact software applications you have installed, you can only have a hunch about your vulnerabilities, but you will never see the real picture. An asset management system gives you actionable insight on which vulnerabilities matter most and which strategies look most promising for efficient risk reduction. Let's see how that works. The CVE table in OT-based Asset Center lets you explore your vulnerability landscape as it affects your installed base. It shows CVE priority, textual description, number of vulnerable systems as opposed to number of affected systems. If these two numbers differ, then it tells you that some of those devices here have already been mitigated. Then the CIV ID and additional metadata. Don't be shocked by the number of vulnerabilities that you're going to see. So it is usual in OT environments that you will be faced with several thousands, if not tens of thousands of vulnerabilities. For any CVE, you can get additional data by simply double clicking on the list entry and that gets you to the vulnerability profile. In this profile, you get all the additional details such as the CVSS vector. Um, then you get the hyperlinks to additional information. If it is a, a Microsoft vulnerability that affects Microsoft products, you will automatically get the uh, recommended patches by Microsoft. If you, you can uh, click on those if you want to, to go directly to the knowledge base entry. And then uh, certainly most important, you see where all the vulnerable devices are. And let's just open this one right here. In this table, I see all the, all, all the affected devices in a specific location. And uh, you can already see by the different color codes and certainly by the icons here in this column that some of these devices have been mitigated already for this uh, infamous RDP vulnerability. And the other devices that are still in red with the X here in the fixed column, they are not mitigated yet. If you want to get additional data on these devices, again, only one click is required to go to the device profile and there you get the additional details on a device level. So uh, what you see here is the operating system version, in this case XP Professional. You get um, the list of all the patches, security patches are highlighted in red. And in the security card, you see the patch history, a very nice feature where you can tell already, well, you know, this device really isn't up to patch because it has seen the last patch in 2013. And we are talking about a total of 181 security patches. That's not really what we would like to see. And when I open up the vulnerabilities, section here um, we see our vulnerability 0708 2019 0708 the rdp vulnerability so this would be one of the devices that we would like to patch you can sort the table in any way you want by simply clicking on the column headers so just for example if i want to sort by publication date i just need to click on here and this would give us now the most recent cves most recent vulnerabilities that have been discovered and uh, one thing that we see here is the um, also infamous very recent ECC vulnerability for Microsoft products. Again if I want to see additional details just do a double click and that takes me to the vulnerable devices. 
Another thing you can do if you want to limit the amount of data that you're looking at, just uh, limit the output to critical and high priority vulnerabilities, just like that. And then your, uh, this, your list gets very much smaller. And this now gets interesting when we do a attack surface map visualization. So what OTBase is now doing for you, it is creating a heat map, a 3D heat map that displays all the vulnerabilities in that list in three dimensions. And, and you can just uh, move this map around just like that for further inspection. So the beauty of it is that you get a visual impression of what would be vulnerabilities to focus on. So let me explain uh, what that means. The size of the rectangle, each rectangle represents one vulnerability and you get the information of what that vulnerability is by simply pointing at a rectangle. And the surface of that rectangle represents the number of affected devices. So the larger the rectangle, the more affected devices. The color represents the CVSS base core of the vulnerability. And then finally, the height or the z-axis represents the criticality of the devices in our installed base that are vulnerable for this CVE. So this gives us something to work with because at the end of the day, vulnerability management is about triage. It's about deciding which of the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of vulnerabilities that affect your installed base is, is actually within reach for mitigation or, or would give you a substantial leverage for risk management because you can't patch them all. In this example, a couple of things stand out. So for example, we see this group up here in the upper right corner, which is all deep in the red and of substantial site, size and height. So we would certainly take a closer look of, at any of those. And you see that once that I point to the vulnerability blocks that I already get additional metadata as a tooltip. And in order to get any more information, I just need to double click on the block. And then I get to the vulnerability profile that we have seen earlier. Now, again, the, the other thing that's interesting here is that criticality is also factored in if and if we only look at the z-axis at the height of those objects then this will tell us right away you know the, these two guys here they are pretty interesting because they have a substantial height oh, it's actually three <laughs> and again we get additional information just by a double click and look what we have got here we have a vulnerability that affects Siemens PLCs. In order to see uh, which they are, we go to the vulnerability profile and get a listing of all the affected Siemens PLCs, for which we again only need to click on the link to be taken to the device profile. The next feature that we are going to explore is the devices list, the list of vulnerable devices in OTBase Asset Center. And the list that you're, you will see here is ranked by risk score. Risk score is the last column in this list. And as you see, it lists individual devices in each row. The important thing to watch out for here is these numbers. So what you see in those last three columns here is for all these devices, the number of CVEs for which the device is vulnerable. This is the vulnerability score and this is the risk score. In a case like this, these two values are the same. However, for critical devices that have been qualified as critical like this one or like this one, criticality comes in as a multiplier. And this is how this list is ranked. So in OT base, users can provide criticality qualifications, either for individual devices or for groups of devices. And 
those quali qualifications are factored in when computing the risk score as they should be. And based on that, we arrive on this ranked list where high risk devices list very high. One important thing to look for when you process the list of vulnerable devices is to not just look at devices with a high number of CVEs for a simple reason. If we scroll down this list, all of a sudden you will see a significant drop in the number of CVEs and also in the risk scores. And that drop occurs when we move from the Windows boxes to the automation devices. Logically, a Windows box will always have many more vulnerabilities than automation equipment because you can only install a piece of firmware on an automation device as opposed to hundreds of software applications and components on Windows boxes. So you want to also check for the automation gear and it works the same way as you see here. So criticality is also observed. In this case, we have a criticality for quality control and it bumps up the risk score. Let's quickly check the details. So for this PLC, if we expand the vulnerabilities, it's about six vulnerabilities that uh, mostly affect the communications processor that is installed in this particular instance. The OTBS Vantage dashboard gives you another high level view of the vulnerabilities that affect your installed base. In this dashboard, you see eight widgets, most of them interactive graphics. The first one shows your vulnerabilities broken down by CVE priority. As an example, we see that we are talking about 35,000 vulnerabilities with critical priority. The next widget shows the number of devices with vulnerabilities, again broken down by CVE priority. Here we learn, for example, that 456 devices have vulnerabilities with critical priority. Down here, we get a listing of the top 10 critical CVEs that affect our data set. You can see the CVE IDs, CVSS base cores, number of vulnerable devices, publication dates, and so on. To the right, we see a ranked listing of the devices by risk score. Similar information is shown in this widget. Similar information is shown in this widget up here in a graphical manner. Let's expand this widget in order to see the details. In this graph, Every marker represents one device and you get details on those devices by just pointing at the markers. The x-axis represents the number of vulnerabilities for those individual devices. So what we see here as an example is that a lot of devices have more than 1000 vulnerabilities, which is not very unusual in OT environments. On the y-axis, we have the risk score, which is usually, which usually leads to a linear distribution for most of the devices, except for those that are labeled as critical because device criticality comes in as a multiplier, so it really bumps up the risk scores. This widget again shows devices ranked by risk score, but this time as a bar chart. Devices are sorted by their risk scores, as you know it from Pareto charts. The yellow line shows the accumulated risk score expressed in percent, which logically starts with zero and ends with 100. The last two widgets to the right show vulnerability numbers in respect to publication date. The lower graph shows the raw numbers, whereas the upper graph shows cumulated numbers. The protection dashboard in OTBS Vantage is a highly useful counterpart to the vulnerability data that we have seen so far. In this widget up left, we see the last patch session for the Windows PCs in our dataset. Again, every marker represents one specific device. The x-axis is a timeline that ends today and it starts at the day when we have seen the last patch for, let's just say, uh, those machines in the data set that are maintained in the most sloppy way seen their last patch in August 2005. The other dimension is the number of security patches. So in the on the y-axis you see at that latest patch session 
how many patches had been installed and what you and high numbers high values are not necessarily required it just depends on the configuration of the device however if you see values such as 1 or 15 like anything below 100 you will suspect that those devices aren't patched properly so what you would like to see is that a lot of devices are located in this front line right here so that the the area in the graph with the with a white background this is all within one year and then we have the yellow area that is from one to two years so these are devices that have seen their last patch within 12 and 24 months and then everything to the left on the red background those are devices that haven't been patched for two years or longer in this graph some devices stand out again simply because of their criticality so all the big red bubbles here those are devices that have a criticality rating and especially those should be pretty much on the right and they should be pretty high so we see here one device that has seen is its last patch in july 2019 however we are only talking about five patches and we would guess right away that these two critical devices up here which have seen their last patch more than six years ago that they have their problems <laughs> and that we need to care about these uh, we can get additional detail by selecting any area in the graph and when we do that we get detailed information down here where we could um, further inspect those devices so for example uh, you remember these two critical devices we see them down here so this is the first one with a high safety criticality and this is the second one with a security criticality in this graph up here you see patch recency so it's related to this um, other graph here but here we are talking about cumulated numbers and this is also quite interesting because it shows us right away that uh, if we move to the one year marker that only about 50 percent of our data set has seen a patch any patch within the last year this widget to the right shows us the number of patches installed over time, um, both with the raw data at a specific day and with the monthly totals. Let's just expand this and let's just get rid of the uh, raw data. Well, this is actually a very useful chart because it shows you your patch capacity. It shows you that on average about 200 patches have been applied per month security patches per month there was a patching frenzy in august 2016 and there was another one in march 2013 and let's not discuss what happened earlier let's just focus on on this area right here and uh, this is very important for a specific reason if you want to lay out your patch plan for the future it is always a good idea to look at your patch capacity because if your plan would be to address um, let's just say 5000 vulnerabilities this graph will tell you automatically that it's not going to happen if you don't boost your patch capacity in any reasonable manner Finally, down here, you have a prioritized patch list that gives you suggestions on what to patch first. OT vulnerability management is hard. And without an asset management system, it's practically impossible to go beyond security theater. The OT-based asset management system will help you identify your most critical cyber risk and also furnish efficient strategies for risk mitigation. For more information on OT-Base, please check out the other videos on our channel and go to the product landing page at langner.com/otbase.